Hello, I'm John Osteen, pastor of Lakewood Church in Houston, Texas. Our church is not just a building. It's a place where people from all races, denominations, and walks of life make contact with the greatest power in the universe, the power of Jesus Christ. Join me during the next 30 minutes and discover why Lakewood Church is here for you with real answers for the real needs you're facing every day. For over 55 years, John Osteen has touched the lives of individuals around the world. Founder and pastor of Lakewood Church, an international training center teaching people to use God's Word to overcome life's everyday challenges. A local church with a worldwide vision, Lakewood is dedicated to helping people in America and over 100 nations of the world. Don't miss the next 30 minutes with Pastor John and Dodie Osteen at the Oasis of Love, a place where miracles happen and lives are changed. You know, the Bible says, they came to John the Baptist and said, What sayest thou thyself? He said, I am the voice. He said what God said about him. I want you to know what God's Word says about you, so stay tuned. Amen. All of us have longings in our heart, and there's a scripture in Psalm 62 that's so good in the Living Bible. It says, Oh, my people, trust God all the time. Pour out your longings before Him, for He can help you. You know, a lot of people uh, have longings that nobody can fil fulfill in this life except God. So if you pour out your longings to God, then He'll just bless you and help you, and you'll just be so glad that you did because He is a God that loves to answer prayers of His children. Amen. Yeah, everybody said amen. amen. I, I said a good amen. amen. We want to welcome all of you all over the world. You preachers who've just come in, uh, listening across the nation, some of you in, in hotel rooms, motel rooms, or wherever you listen in your home, we're just so glad you have tuned in. We want to be a blessing to you. We, do, we don't want to put you down. We want to lift you up. Somebody reminded me, said, Brother Osteen, why don't you tell the television audience, at least in the Houston area, we have Wednesday night service. Yes, we have Sunday night at 7 o'clock and Wednesday night at 7.30. People come here, a couple of thousand people come here. Many of them just get off work, just come on out and we have a good time. We invite you to come to Lakewood Church anytime. You are welcome here. Give them a good amen. amen. Let's hold up our Bibles and make our confession. Everybody say it. This is my Bible. This is my Bible. I am what it says I am. I have what it says I have. I can do what it says I can do. Today I will be taught the Word of God. I boldly confess. My mind is alert. My heart is receptive. I will never be the same. I am about to receive the incorruptible, indestructible, ever-living seed of the Word of God. I will never be the same. Never, never, never. I will never be the same. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. You may be seated, and for the sake of the television audience, we're reading from the book of Numbers, chapter 13, beginning to read with verse 30. And Caleb stilled the people before Moses and said, us, said, let us go up at once and possess it, for we're well able to overcome it. But the men that were with him said, we are not able to go up against this people, for they are stronger than we. And they brought an evil report of the land which they had searched unto the children of Israel, saying, The land through which we have gone to search it is a land that eateth up the inhabitants thereof. All the people that we saw in it are men of great stature, that is, they were giants. There we saw the giants, the sons of Anak, which were of the giants. And we were in our own sight grasshoppers. And so were we in their sight. I want to preach to you today an encouraging message to help you know who you are in the Lord Jesus Christ. I used to have a dog. Actually, it belonged to my daughter uh, April out here. A dog named Scooter. That dog is a very famous dog. I've told about him all over the world. He is a, mostly a German shepherd, not full of blood. But he, he was a fine dog. He'd go with me when I walked, and I'd walk around and around the block to keep my body strong and healthy, you know, and he would bounce out of the yard with me, you know, and run down here and run down there, and his, his tail would wag uh, like he was brave, and, and his muscles would ripple, and uh, he was the king of the road. 
I mean, everybody better look out because Scooter is coming your way. I tell you, he'd chase cats, he'd chase, chase rabbits, he'd chase anything he could find to chase. I mean, he was a very strong uh, uh, looking dog and uh, he just wanted everybody to feel him throwing his weight around. And we'd walk and we'd go together. So I was going one day with this mighty dog. And uh, as we were going down the way, I noticed a little tiny dog about this high and about this long. I'm talking about El Pudolo. <laughs> I mean, it was just a little tiny thing, and he came running out charging at Scooter. Scooter was a little bit ahead of me, and I thought, poor dog. Scooter's going to have a hot dog for lunch. <laughs> I mean, he's going to eat him up. He's going to just tear that little thing up. He ought to have better sense than to come out of that door. But here he is running and charging my scooter. And I thought, oh my, I hope, I hope scooter doesn't kill him. And you know what happened? When he got right up to scooter barking like the world was coming to an end, I mean barking, 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 scooter just laid down and put all four paws up in the air. <laughs> Gave up. I wanted to kick him all the way home. I want to preach today on this subject, giants at the feet of pygmies. Giants at the feet of pygmies. God said that's exactly how some of my people are. I've made them sons and daughters of the Most High God, and yet little old uh, demons come out, little old short demons, little old hairy demons come out, and my children, sons and daughters of the Most High God, fall at their feet as though they cannot do anything about them. Thank God we're going to learn who we are and what we have in the Lord Jesus Christ. Now, you notice the story here. God sent 12 people in there, uh, Moses did, to spy out the land. Ten of them came back with a bad report, and two came with a good report. I don't know about you, but I always want to be those with a good report. Faith always have, has a good report. If you can't say anything good, well, don't say anything at all. Keep your mouth shut. Faith has a good report. Now, these ten people came back, and they said, Oh, the Amorites, the Hittites, the Jebusites, all the ites live in there. All those ites are big. They got giants in the land, walled cities, and they eat up in the inhabitants. We're not able. We're not able. See, unbelief always cries, I'm not able. And uh, the people begin to weep and to mourn. And they said, it's a good land. Here's the fruit. But you know, we're not able. We're not able. But Caleb and Joshua, Caleb stood up, and Joshua was just like it. He gave a good report, and he said, he said, we are well able let us go up at once. You see, these people gave the secret of why they were afraid. They said, when we saw all the opposition, when we saw everything out there, they said, uh, we were in our own sight as grasshoppers. We are in our own sight grasshoppers, and so were we in their sight. Let me tell you something. If you have a poor image of yourself, everybody else is going to think the same way. They, they said, well, we're just grasshoppers. What can we do? But Caleb said, we are well able. Let us go up at once and possess the land. I don't know what the land means to you. Uh, the promised land, in one sense of the word, is the land where the baptism and the Holy Ghost is, where you speak in tongues, prophesy, pray for the sick, and cast out devils, and know who you are in Christ. Thank God for that. But you may have a dream here today. You're pushing toward that dream. You're pushing toward uh, that goal, and you're, you have a desire to, to have, have your heart uh, satisfied in God. Whatever it is, uh, the devil doesn't want you to get it, but God wants you to get it. Don't lie down at the foot of some demon and say, I can't do it, rise up and say, I am well able. Amen. Shout, I'm well able. Amen. Shout, I'm well able. Amen. You see, the Bible says, they came to John and said, uh, what sayest thou thyself? That we may give a report to those who, uh, who sent us. What sayest thou thyself? Well, you see, John the Baptist uh, didn't say anything about, uh, he could think about it in the natural. They said, are you that prophet? He said, no. Are you the Messiah? No. He said, well, what are you going to say about yourself? And what John the Baptist did, he quoted God's word and said, I am what God says I am. I, 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 I hear him saying, I am the voice 
I am the voice of one crying in the wilderness. What was John saying? He's saying, if God says it about me, that's what I am. You see, we need to realize who we are in the Lord Jesus Christ. I don't know. You know, I went to church many years before I got the baptism in the Holy Spirit, and I never did grow hardly at all because I, nobody ever taught me about who I was in Christ. I knew I was going to heaven, but you see, even though I knew I was going to heaven, I'm not in heaven now. I'm not in the sweet by and the by. I'm in the nasty now now. I'm down here where the devil is. I'm down here where demons are. And I, I begin to realize what people need to know is not to have inspiration but information about who they are. God has a lot of good things to say about you. You know, the Bible says that we are born again. Our spirit man is born again, not of corruptible seed, but of incorruptible by the word of God that liveth and abideth forever. The Bible says, therefore, if any man or woman be in Christ, he is a, he's a new creature. A new creature, a new creature. One translation says a new species. A new creature, old things are passed away, and behold, all things have become new. Thank God I know I'm born again. I know I'm a new creature. But now God has a lot to say about that new creature on the inside of your body. It says he was made sin for us that we might become the righteousness of God. What does that mean? That means I can stand before the devil without trembling and before God without blushing. Thank God I'm the righteousness of God, and so are you. Now, we're not bragging on ourselves. No, no, no. It's not our righteousness. That all stinks in the sight of God. But we are the righteousness of God in him. The Bible says we are created in righteousness and true holiness. And listen to what the Bible says about this new creature. This is the way we ought to talk. The Bible says, uh, Paul said, I can do all things. Everybody say, I can do all things. I can do all things. Say, I can do all things. I can do all things. See, that's the confession of faith that will put you over. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. Greater is he that's in me than he that's in the world. Say that. Say it again. Greater is he that is in me than he that is in the world. I don't know what you're facing, but the one inside of you is greater than all the problems you have. Amen. Hallelujah. The Bible says he always makes us to triumph in Christ Jesus. We are more than conquerors. We're not just conquerors. We are more than conquerors. Hallelujah. That's, you see, you've got, to get a, you've got to get an image of yourself like God sees you. And God sees you as more than a conqueror. God sees you as having the greater one on the inside of you. God sees you as, as always triumphing in Christ Jesus. Shall I agree with God? I agree with Say, God. I agree with God. I agree with God. See, this new creature has a right to use the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. And he said, these signs shall follow them who believe in my name. They shall cast out demons. Resist the devil, and he'll flee from you. Uh, submit yourself to God. Resist the devil, and he'll flee from you. And be sober, be vigilant, for your adversary, the devil, has a roaring light walking about, seeking whom he may devour. But you see, the new creature is not afraid of the devil nor demons. Because we are covered by the blood of Jesus. We have the life of Jesus. We have the name of Jesus. We have the nature of Jesus. Angels are about us, and Jesus goes before us, and goodness and mercy follow us. I'm telling you, we're well off. Shout amen three times. Amen. You see, the, the, we see what the world doesn't see. We hear what the world doesn't hear. We're not of this world. Jesus said so. We're spacemen. We belong to another planet. Amen. Our citizenship is registered in another planet. But I, I told the story about the dog whistle. Do you know how that works? You know, if I had a dog whistle and I blew on it, you wouldn't hear a single solitary thing. But if we had some dogs in here, everyone would prick up their ears. You know why? Because they hear on a different frequency, a higher frequency than we do. So they use that to call the dogs. Thank God, just like those dogs can hear what we can't hear, we can hear what the world does not hear. Amen. 
We're on a different frequency. We're marching to a different drummer. We're not going to do what the world does, dance like the world dances, and drink like the world drinks, and take dope like the world takes. We are marching to the sound of a different drummer. Thank God. And we hear what the world doesn't hear. Amen. You know, you know, I want you to notice that faith, faith does not deny the fact. A lot of people think to walk in faith, you've got to deny the evident facts of your normal life. When we were first getting, you know, started in the faith message and, and all of that, you know, uh, Dodie would say, you know, I feel better. I said, don't say that. And she said, you know, I think I got a headache. I said, don't say that. And she said, well, you know, I'm not feeling, feeling like I'm punitive. I said, don't say that. One day she looked at me and got me and helped me. She said, I want to tell you something, John Osteen. I want you to write on my tombstone, I told you I was sick. <laughs> but, you know, I, I was in a place of denial. I didn't want to admit anything. <laughs> See, uh, Caleb and Joshua saw all the facts. They saw the giants. They saw the Jebusites and the Hittites and all the other ites. They saw all the walled cities. They saw the strength of their armies. See, faith does not, does not deny the fact. If cancer is in your body, you recognize that's what you're fighting. If you have some other disease, you don't say, I don't have it. You say, I know the devil tried to put it on me, but I'm going to get rid of it. See, they saw the same thing the ten unbelievers saw. But faith sees more than the giants. Faith sees more than the wall cities. Faith sees more than the problem. Faith sees God. See, we, they didn't deny the giants were there. They didn't deny that the Hittites were there. They didn't deny those cities were, uh, were walled. They didn't deny the danger. They just said, we believe with our God we can overcome. Amen. You see, uh, when Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego were in the fiery furnace, they didn't deny the heat was there. They just said, our God is able to deliver us. And I'll tell you, the fourth man jumped in that fire. Daniel didn't deny that he was in the, uh, he was in the lion's den. He, you didn't get him to say, Daniel, how you doing down there? You in the lion's den? I'm not in the lion's den. I don't see any lions. I don't see any lions. No, no, no lions down here. No, no lions. I don't see any lions. No. Anybody got any sense? He's down there among lions. See, but he didn't deny the fact. He just knew that God could deliver him from the lions. And, uh, you, you take uh, Paul and Silas sitting in jail, and uh, here they are bound, hand and foot, their backs bleeding. They didn't deny they were in jail, but they saw more than the jail. They saw a God who was able to deliver them. And so they began to sing and to praise the Lord and to thank God for their deliverance, and in the face of all the things that faced them, God sent an earthquake and shook that prison, and they came out shouting the victory. Say, I can do it. I can. Say, I can do it. I can. You see, faith doesn't deny the storm. No, we're not living with our head in the sand. Faith doesn't deny the storm, but it believes God to stand up in the boat and still the storm. I'll tell you, our God is able to invade every storm you've got in life and derive its currents in the right direction. And what the devil meant for evil, God can bring some good out of it. Could I have an amen? amen. Give the Lord a hand clap. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. You see, we, we be not able. We'll put you down. We are well able. Notice, we be not able brings fear. Brings fear not only to their hearts, but also to all the people. The Bible says, and the people lifted up their voice and wept and began to complain against God because of ten men who were giants at the feet of pygmies, trembling. Why, God said, don't you remember that I brought you through the Red Sea? Don't you remember that you had a pillar of fire by night and a cloud by day? Don't you remember that I brought water out of the rock? 
Don't you remember that I slew those in the, in the land of Egypt? Don't you remember that I am El Shaddai, the God who is more than enough? They had forgotten their God, and they trembled as giants, sons of God or servants of God at the feet of fear, giants at the feet of pygmies. And God said, don't you remember the miracles? You say, well, Brother Osteen, do you really think they could have gone in there in the first day instead of wandering 40 years? Let me tell you something. After 40 years of wandering, God said, every one of you going to drop dead in this, in this, uh, in this desert. For every, every day you searched out, 40 days, you're going to walk a year until every one of your carcasses are, are dead and your children that you whined about and cried about and said, our children, our children, God's not going to take care of them. They're, they're not going to be able to live. Our children, our children. God said, now listen, I'm going to let all y'all die, and I'm going to buy myself. I'm going to bring your children into the promised land. I'm telling you, our God can take care of our children. Amen. I said, our God can take care of our children. Amen. And did you know 40 years later, after all of them had died, Joshua now is sending two men in to spy out the land. He decided, I'm not going to send 12. Just two came back with a good report, so I'm going to just send two. So he sent two in there, and they came to Rahab the harlot's house. And Rahab the harlot hid them, you know. And when she got them, uh, got, let them get away, she said this amazing thing. Now, this 40 years had passed by. Caleb told them, their defense has departed. We're well able. Let's go in. 40 years. Now, she said, oh, we know all the land where I live. We know that the Lord is with you. We know how he parted the Red Sea. That was 40 years before. We know his pillar of fire by night, his cloud by day. We know that the Lord has given you the land. We know it, and all the land is trembling. You see, they trembled back there 40 years earlier. Let me tell you something, folks. If you can see from God's sight, I'm telling you, when you know who you are and come into your rightful heritage, the devil and demons tremble at the very sound of your feet. What we need to do today is to stand up as the giants of sons and daughters of the Most High God, washed in His blood. We have an infusion of eternal life in us. We have His righteousness. We have His ability in His name. And what we need to do is stop whining and crying about what the devil has done to us and trying to do to us. We should stand up and take our promised land. You know, when I get to thinking about who I am and, and the power and the authority of the name of the Lord Jesus, I think of that song, I got a feeling everything is going to be all right. Amen. I got a feeling everything's going to be all right. But listen, whether I have a feeling or not, it's going to be all right anyway. Amen. Go ahead and give the Lord a hand. Amen. 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 God is not a man that he should lie, nor the son of man that he should repent. Hath he said it and shall he not do it? Hath he spoken it and shall it not come to pass? God's word is forever, and he watches over his word to perform it. His words are full of life and power, and we have his word in us, and we have his power in us, and we are giants in the land. Now, you people who are listening on television, you say, Brother Ozzie, I never heard anything like this before. I didn't know who I was. I didn't know what I could do. Yes, you're more than a conqueror. You can do all things through Christ who strengthens you. You, you will always be made to triumph through Christ Jesus. The greater one lives on the inside of you. And God, with him, all things are possible. You don't have to die. You can live. You don't have to stay in pain. You can be healed. You don't have to go through all of that drugs and alcohol. You can be delivered in the name of the Lord Jesus. Instead of the devil trampling on you, you can start to trample on the devil. Could I have an amen? Amen. I want to tell all the congregation out there, it's a joy to be a Christian in this hour. Thank God it's dark on the outside. Listen, the darker it got in Egypt, the lighter it got in Israel. Thank God it's getting lighter and lighter, and the tide is turning, and I'm glad I'm on the winning side. And you can too, if you have Jesus in your heart as your Lord and your Savior. Somebody reminded me, said, Brother Osteen, at the end, don't pray so fast. We can't pray that fast, so I'm going to pray slow. Amen. If you want Jesus as your Lord and Savior, if you want to live like a conqueror,
Put your hand on your heart now. And I want you folks right there. The audience is not participating in this, just you. I want you to pray this. Oh, God, I know without Jesus I'm lost. Oh, God, without Jesus I'll die and go to hell. But, God, I don't want to be lost. I don't want to go to hell. I want to go to heaven. I want eternal life. I want peace. I want you to wash away all my sins and my past. So, Jesus, I know you're the only way. So I ask you, Jesus, to come into my heart and save me now. I accept you as my Savior, and I say with my mouth, Jesus is my Lord. Live big in me, Jesus, and I'll never be ashamed of you. Listen, if I don't see you here, we'll see you in heaven.